good morning um, participants and uh, welcome to this session where we will be just sharing a bit of comments uh, touching on your articles. I should begin by saying that uh, I've learned quite a bit and perhaps before we go to the articles, um, let's remember that our at our level, we're in the level where we are asked or expected to receive criticism and uh, praise in the same vein. Uh, at the end of the day, it is to improve our, our skills, it is to improve our knowledge of the subject matter. And, uh, you know, as iron sharpens iron, um, we continue sharpening one another. I have been sincerely sharpen, been sharpened after going through these articles. And I hope that after this session, you will also feel that uh, the little, or can I just say my two cents um, uh, advice will also be useful. Um, I'll begin with the, the first comment. I'm not very sure whether the participant has logged in as yet. Um, this is the first article, cut trees, broken corals and mediators. A very interesting article, um, straight away, of course, the first thing is, can we be uh, the voice of nature? At least that's what I have understood from this article. My only advice, I think, is to be seen in the first paragraph. Again, it's just a suggestion where uh, on the one, two, three, four, five, on the third line, first paragraph, I've just requested uh, my colleague to tone down a bit on the use of clowns. Of course, I do understand what she means, uh, so that perhaps it does not rub, rub some quarters the wrong way. Uh, we're extremely uh, religious uh, society and perhaps I don't want a situation where I feel like my priest is a clown, but point taken, uh, point taken. Then, yes, um, my also other observation, of course, this is that the article has brought out the possibility of us mediators being nature whisperers, you know, in the same way as we have uh, horse whisperers and we have several other types of whisperers, those who can actually listen uh, to the nature, listen to the language uh, that nature speaks to them and uh, actively be involved in, in mediation processes that can help nature uh, through uh, nature-human uh, conflict. So beautifully done. That's cut trees. Even the the very title, Cut Trees, Broken Corals and Mediators. We can go to the second article. Um, yes, the first article is by my colleague, Sarah. <laughs> um, the second article, Employee Employer Mediation in the Banking Sector. This is by Pauline Wahinya. Um, 
because it's uh, it's 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 very common to hear stories that have been brought out uh, in this blog from friends, relatives, colleagues, uh, especially during the COVID era. Um, but even before that, we have so many colleagues that uh, have indicated the unfairness they feel, even where it is perhaps obvious that uh, they are on the wrong. So this article has brought out the situation really as it is on the ground. Uh, my very brief comments, of course, that the writer here has nailed it. That is brought it out very well. I've however suggested that uh, you take into consideration the two types of employees because I know the banks have had a way of going around this, but they have always been and they still are unionizable, I believe, unionizable employees and non-unionizable. So I think looking at the article it has brought more about conflict between the employees and the non-unionizable or ununionizable but we also have unionizable colleagues uh, and as such it is important that uh, the tripartite approach uh, where there's government there's uh, the employer and then there are the representatives from the union that come together to then help in a conciliatory process. Um, yeah. And of course, also to be a bit careful to note the stages at which mediation can be introduced and the terminology perhaps in the employment and labor matters we especially when the matter has already gone to the EL, elrc the employment and labor relations court then the term that is usually used is that the parties will be referred to conciliation and that is conciliators that are provided for by the Ministry of Labor. Yeah, uh, what else? Perhaps also just to give us a glimpse of, uh, of, 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 of the main issues in the introductory part, uh, give us the flesh and uh, bring out its conclusion um, so that it's, uh, it is just a bit more uh, structured. And the third article by Mini Mangeli, again, a colleague of mine, This is mediation and devolution in Kenya, a case for mediation centers in all counties. This is very, very uh, topical, very thematic within the 10, 11 years that uh, we've enjoyed, I hope, the benefits of devolution. Um, I think here my only comment uh, was that uh, the author finds a way of uh, tampering this to only mean subject matter, especially where in the first sentence you've used where disputes are resolved. Um, It is important to perhaps just find a way of, uh, of uh, being specific because 
by law, not all can be mediated. Not all types of disputes can be mediated or arbitrated. So the author could just revisit it. Then in paragraph one, two, three, four, towards, I think the last sentence, probably I would correctly state that in as much as, you know, we may blame the, the judicial system, perhaps it would also be, be fair for the, for the article to, to give a fair uh, presentation of what is there. Because courts, courts have one, the chief justices docket briefs you know the chief justices docket briefs are briefs that uh, are given for free actually uh, to to accused persons especially in criminal matters and especially in capital offenses where it is the the government that actually pays the lawyers that come to court so it's important to to be aware of that and then in civil matters, there are proper briefs. And proper briefs are for those that cannot afford court fees, cannot afford uh, advocates. And as such, um, there are mechanisms for that. And there are a few NGOs, I know. Uh, but the only problem, of course, and I agree with the writer, is that they are only available in certain major cities, probably Nairobi, Mombasa, Nyeri. And some are just confined within Nairobi and don't have branches, like uh, Kituo Chasheria, for example, is just in Nairobi. So even as, 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 as uh, we, we look into, into accessing uh, justice through mediation, it is also important that we give a fair presentation of the situation. There are those matters that cannot be mediated. If they're not mediatable. There are those matters which uh, are not arbitrable, but we can sensitize uh, the public that there are also alternatives that can only be found uh, in mainstream justice. And that is through proper briefs, if they're civil matters, and through Chief Justice's docket, if there are criminal matters, and especially where the, uh, the offenses are capital. Beautifully written one, uh, though minimum. <clears throat> then the next article, article number four, is by Sela. Ruto, integration of professional mediators in the chief's office in Capserton location, Nandi County in Kenya. Um, I think for this one, you know, uh, perfectly brought out, I've just perhaps uh, pointed out the fact that Article 159C um, also includes traditional dispute resolution mechanisms. But I know since this is about mediation, um, I have actually suggested that uh, it can be possible to find out a way of integrating um, the local mediators. I know we have our professional mediators, but uh, reasonably given even the numbers, 
and even that we want to leverage on the chief's office. And let us not forget that even at that level, there are village elders and those village elders can also be integrated because there is so much they know about the specific uh, culture and specific uh, you know, manner of coming up with uh, solutions within that particular location. But yes, I agree that it would be a good thing to have uh, professional mediators at the chief's camp, but let us also not uh, downsize the, the, local, the local mediators. See if there's another comment there. Yeah. <clears throat> Article five, the place of mediation in access in access to justice, a Kenyan perspective. Uh, this is by Phyllis Wangwe. Um, Yeah, in terms of content, uh, really brought out well. Um, perhaps the structure may just have to be uh, to be a bit more uh, consistent, right from the introductory part to the body to the conclusions, where you've also given us, uh, you know, you've suggested remedies. I've just gone all the way to the last bullet under approach remedies for grievances. And uh, my comment on that, we've, you've indicated develop culturally acceptable alternatives to harmful practices. Um, my suggestion is that this one is a slippery one. And you may just need to taper it a bit because it can open a Pandora's box. Because when we talk of uh, a multicultural society like ours, and uh, you know, with the freedom of religious and all that, there are several culturally and religiously acceptable alternatives that may not lead to uh, achieving the ends of justice through mediation because um, one culture may be very different from another culture. Perhaps conflicts can be between, many times conflicts can also be between two different parties from two different uh, cultures. But what I really brought, brought out in this uh, comment, and that is culturally and religiously acceptable alternatives. Remember, there are certain religiously acceptable alternatives that uh, can be extreme. Let me give you an example. Among the Muslims, when uh, your sister is, has been uh, defiled and you end up killing the defiler, uh, you become a hero. Now that could be a religiously acceptable alternative, you know? So uh, that's the reason why I've, I've, I've requested that it be tapered a bit, just tapered a bit, but yes, uh, it is actually possible and I agree that uh, there can be uh, those alternatives within the culture that, that can help. Article six, opening a mediation office in Tarakaniti County in Kenya. Uh, this is by Christine uh, Kakiema. I hope that I have pronounced it well. 
Um, this is an, a very noble uh, proposal, a very, very good uh, uh, proposal to bring mediation to where the people are. And from the article, it's very clear that uh, the closest uh, mediation center is 45 kilometers away. Of course, the author has actually brought out even the cost implications being very, very expensive at 500 Kenya shillings. Uh, everything about this article is, is, is really good uh, for the purposes of, of having a long-term solution. My suggestion, meanwhile, and this is something that is happening, uh, recently, I talked to someone from uh, Makweni Law Courts, and uh, they indicated that they also have a mobile uh, court. And perhaps my suggestion would be to add to, to this blog a possibility of, meanwhile, something that can work out very, very quickly, and it is possible, is for there to be a mediation, a mobile mediation center as you know the other issues that have been brought out in this article uh, you know touching on the cost implications and you know all that bureaucracy but by the time that is done you know they may not really be be, be waiting uh, for now that mediation center to be brought but between that time and now one proposal could actually be to have a mobile a mediation center, realistically speaking. What else? Yes, there is the sixth approach towards the end, next to the conclusion, where you know you've also indicated about approaching churches, media houses, and conferences. And yes, again, I have indicated as you do that, as that is done. Uh, let there be some mediation already taking place through the mobile mediation center um, funded from MBO. But all in all, a good structured uh, blog. Article 7, <clears throat> impact of grief on the mediation process. Um, this is really good in that looking at what the quotes are all about, um, and that's, that comes by training. You know, the judges are meant to be unmoved by emotions. So this is really good, and it calls upon the human side of the mediator, and it is possible because you know, mediation is so informal. Um, so so this, is, this is really good. Um, and again, as I have indicated, it is something which the judicial officers do not look into uh, or are not supposed to actually, because they should ideally not even flinch or be moved by feelings. In fact, this comes by training right from the time when they are advocates, that you will not take your feelings to court. You don't take your feelings to court. Uh, you just go there with facts. And this can actually be very, very, uh, uh, you know, it can remove the human, the human face of, 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 of disputes, of disputes. So a very good one. Patricia Cage. Then the eighth article, child inclusive mediation, the involvement, the involvement of children in the process of mandatory family mediation by Margaret Gatia. Um, a very nice article. Of course, it's done in several other countries, 
we we have looked at different approaches perhaps you know the south african approach the australian approach to to this uh, and it works extremely well i wish we would you know uh, embrace it in this country as well as margaret ngatia has actually uh, put it um, however my take here would be to tweak this a bit um, so that it would be culture sensitive. And uh, we avoid sometimes what we have done in the past by copy pasting what we think works out there. Uh, because what works in one country, like in South Africa, in a very different environment, very, very different culture, uh, may not work in Kenya in as much as uh, the, the tools, you know, can be actually um, um, encultured, the tools can be encultured in such a way that uh, they can suit ours here in Kenya. In addition to that, I've also commented that even within the country, listening to the voice of children, because I think this is what I really, really picked from this lovely article. Even from within the country, we have ruralites, we have urbanites. Urban children are socially engineered in a different way. Rural children are socially engineered in a different way. And again, even further, if you look into it, um, within the urban setup, we have children that are brought up in informal sectors and children that are brought up in different classes. And even that too could actually be considered. Why? Because then we need to understand their environment and develop these tools, which then can be effectively used by the end users and you know the end users are usually you ourselves ourselves as mediators uh, uh, and where they are to be used by the courts the magistrates the, the the children department and all that so it has to make sense because the tools determine the ultimate design and that ultimate decision should be informed by effective, effective tools. Otherwise, it's brought out the issue of the voice of the child. Well, Eleventh article. Here's why emotions matter in mediation, the emotional side of conflict resolution. This is by Felista. Marura Mosili, PhD. Um, again, this is a really good article, being a blog though. Uh, of course, I stand to be corrected here, but I think it's not really a must to give citations in between the blog. You know, it's an easy read. Um, but again, a very, very good article. Now, there is also on the one, two, three, four, fifth, fifth sentence where one has indicated confidential. It's a general rule that there has to be a confidential environment. However, parties can actually consent to, to this. Um, so probably that could be some something which the writer could also uh, take into consideration. Parties can actually consent to the mediation process being public. And we've seen it uh, even here in Kenya. I think it comes every, is it every Wednesday, the morning, 
Radio Jumbo, or one of those radios that actually resolve family disputes between uh, husbands and wives. And the whole program is actually aired uh, for everybody to hear. The 12th article, mediation in the workplace for startups, transforming team leaders into conflict ninjas, the untapped income opportunity for mediators. Wow, this was quite a mouthful uh, by Asia Kamukama. Uh, this is really awakening, uh, very beautiful. And perhaps, you know, I've also looked into it. it it actually brings out some of the problems that those of us that uh, struggled with startups from the beginning should have known. But I should have read this article then when I started my startup. Um, so it's a beautiful article. Perhaps it, you know, it, it just bring out a bit clearer whether. It is the team leader who is to be trained in mediation or whether the training is in management of strategies um, so that uh, you know it sends a message home i am the team leader in this particular startup am i supposed to be the one who is trained in mediation or should i be trained in conflict management strategies where I don't have to be a mediator, but I should be aware that uh, I should bring on board the issue of mediation right from the beginning uh, during the inception. At the inception and the first few months, perhaps a few years um, after putting up my startup. Very, very awakening. Asia, come, come. 13 article, mediation is a determinant of implementation of readmission policy of girls after teenage pregnancy in public secondary schools in Makweni County. Just as I had indicated, I've really learned quite a bit. Um, and uh, this is wow. Uh, most of us always just want to point fingers or run away or be embarrassed. Um, but few of us want to be on the side of you know, resolving this particular conflict. Um, just a comment that I have made, comment or two, is perhaps not to forget that uh, it is not about, it is not only about the, the girl, the teenage girl that is pregnant or the, the teenage mother and the school, the society, the parents. Where is the father in all this? Because um, where it is, you know, it takes two to tango. I know most of the time the father is somewhere there. And in particular, where the father could be a relative and not just a relative. Sometimes the father could even be a sibling and the father could even be the girl's father himself. So it is important that uh, perhaps in this blog, we also bring out that other aspect. And that aspect is usually very, very difficult unless we also adapt what one of the bloggers here have indicated as the voice of children. And if that can be integrated, it would be easy for us, the mediators, to even get to know who this father to this particular uh, child is, where it will not be harmful to know that. Uh, 
yes, very nice article. 14th article, trauma informed mediation. Again, this is an amazing topic. The, the only comment that I've, that I've made here is perhaps for, for the author, Njerin Jao, to give us a bit more on what the qualifications of such a mediator should be, because I believe this is, again, a very sensitive area. So someone like me who probably does not have certain qualifications uh, in matters, I don't know, maybe psychology, clinical psychology, or you know, counseling and all that. I may not be the best mediator to go to Laikipia. So my comment would be perhaps to also bring out literally magnify uh, the qualification. We saw it in the Ethiopian tragedy and uh, we had a Dr. Felix Opondo uh, go to Ethiopia uh, to condole with family members and he, you know, he's a psychologist. So you know, that, this particular topic reminded me of the Ethiopian uh, airline tragedy. And there was a lot, a lot in terms of, 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 of uh, that type of, uh, of uh, uh, counseling taking place. But again, and, and I'm sure that we, we know that today, that particular matter was actually settled out of court. And probably, you know, we should say thank you to to mediators or arbitrators, people who are there to, uh, to resolve this matter out of court. Uh, but you can only imagine that perhaps those mediators may have had this additional um, qualification because it is not easy to lose a loved one and only be given ashes that are as close as possible to the DNA of the family members, where you then go and bury the ashes. The 15th article by Philomena Chege, resolving disputes in Chamas, you know, community, community development groups through mediation. This is equally amazing, actually. Um, of course, you know, the, the intro has literally brought out, um, you know, uh, a scenario. Um, and so, Maybe for me, the only comment here is very, very uh, brief in that probably just add the way we usually see it, uh, emphasize that faith is not her real name so that if my wife is called faith, we don't come looking for you. Um, and Bendo women group also just emphasize that this is not the real name. Uh, but this really is an article that is an awakening call uh, to those of us. You know, we also have male charmers, uh, though they don't work as well as yours, uh, the female charmers. But the, the realities, this blog has brought out the realities uh, of the disintegration of Chamas, and I do agree with the, the reasons. The reasons can be actually very petty. Towards the end, I've also indicated that uh, most of these are un, unregistered. Of course, they are Chamas, you know, they are, most of them are unregistered uh, organizations. And uh, 
in as much as they are unregistered, perhaps you could also suggest that as members be, become part of the group, you know, uh, a deed, a constitution, or you could give it whatever name and kind of an agreement could actually be given to the members who come in, they read it and they sign that agreement. But most importantly is the aspect of the dispute resolution clause. And that dispute resolution clause should indicate that should there be any dispute, then the same dispute uh, between the chama members will be resolved through mediation. So that there is that, uh, first of all, sensitization and that comfort. Then we have the 16th article. This is by Ascalia Maingi, uh, Critical Awareness of Mediation to the Kenyan uh, Public. And uh, again, you know, um, my only comment here is, I think and uh, methodology, yes, methodology down there. And I've indicated that you add village elders, you add village elders who actually are uh, the first point of conflict resolution. Even before the dispute is escalated to the assistant chiefs and chiefs, uh, where then we are foreseeing. Uh, a possibility of uh, the, you know, the, the, the chiefs uh, sensitizing people on, uh, on mediation. Let those village elders be sensitized also, because they do so much. That was my only addition. Then we go to the 17th article, child custody and co-parenting in mediation. Excuse me. This is really, really uh, spot on. This is very common, very sensitive. I think my very first uh, suggestion here by Joyce Kingori, my very first suggestion was to perhaps look at the possibility of rewriting the, the title. Because the title is actually Child Custody and Co-Parenting and Mediation. Whether it is possible, it's just a suggestion, this is your baby, uh, whether it could be just the other way around, mediation in child custody and co-parenting. Um, and this actually is short, precise, um, but I've also in the objective suggested what one of the bloggers had actually indicated, and that is listening to the children's voices, because most of the time, uh, it is third parties, including us mediators, who decide, yeah, who decide for the children. So it is ourselves and the parents. Most of the time, the children are not there. So I've suggested that if we could also have a mechanism where using those tools uh, by some experts in uh, um, listening to the children's voices so that we know what is, what is it that the children themselves want. Most of the time, we are the ones who determine what they should want. Uh, and yet in certain instances, you find that what we think the children do not want is exactly what actually heals them. I can give a, a brief example. I can see I still have the time. 
uh, there's this, of course, it has to remain anonymous. Um, example where every weekend a child had to travel several kilometers by himself, by bus, from his mother's um, from his mother's home, because then the mother had the natural custody in this particular case, to where the father stays. And after a while, the father himself felt that that was really putting the child at risk and, uh, you know, giving uh, unnecessary burden to the child. Now, when there was a mechanism of bringing this child so that this child could actually tell his story. What the child said was amazing. The child act actually said that he enjoys that bus ride because it takes his mind off the situation that the parents are in. So for that particular child, um, that journey was actually therapeutic. So yes, very spot on. It's important that we actually uh, listen, even as mediators, first and foremost, to uh, children's voices. <clears throat> 18th article, mediation and murder cases in Kenya. Uh, this is actually based on a case that was decided here in the country. And uh, we also know that there were several comments that ensued thereafter. And yes, it's still, yeah, uh, one of its kind. We may not hear of many more of its kind. And uh, maybe just my, my comment on this is that uh, these judgments judgments are very controversial yes it was done it was it was it was a judge by a superior it was a, a decision by a superior court and from where from my field of study these are what we most often refer to as uh, as uh, judicial activism and uh, Yes, judicial activism is very, very popular in the US. And as such, uh, yeah, and perhaps we also had, had that terminology used during the recent BBI uh, criticism after the judges had done their, their, their part. And uh, my addition here is that uh, these are usually generally not mediatable cases. They are not mediatable cases, um, but food for thought, food for thought. Uh, because if we begin here, because those of you who can remember this case, it was actually informed by, by culture, partly Somali culture, partly Muslim culture. And uh, if we start going there, then I would perhaps ask, what about the, the Maasai perspective? In the Maasai culture, uh, there are traditional justice systems that are seen within the Maasai where someone has been murdered and uh, one just has to pay the other family, literally compensate the other family using cows. Okay, so the question would be, if we went this way in uh, Republic versus Mohammed Abdul Mohammed's case, tomorrow if there's a Maasai who has murdered another Maasai, will we also go the way of compensating the family? Uh, so yeah, food for thought. Um, but my take is that generally, these are not mediatable. Uh, cases, perhaps the case by case basis. Article 19, 
<clears throat> or rather the ninth article, uh, 19th article is by Kari Kanampio, Sessions to Sensitize and, and Introduce ADR for a Happier, Cohesive, and informed community that is aligned with care vision 2030. Um, of course, again, you know, it, it's really, really important to sensitize the public that there are alternative dispute resolution mechanisms and Article 159C, including traditional justice systems. Uh, however, I have also just, you know, though I agree, of course, under the method, the first method there, I've just said that perhaps we should be careful to not mediatable cases. So it's not all uh, criminal cases that can be mediatable. There are those that are mediatable. Um, and perhaps to the author, I've just made a, a comment to refer to the Philippines uh, case study, because they also have mediatable criminal cases. And probably that would uh, give you uh, a clearer picture. So yes, I definitely agree. There are those that uh, can be mediatable, but at the same time, be aware of those that cannot. The 20th article, this is by Cecilia Manyonge, the place of confidentiality in online mediation. Um, I think this is a very good one. And, uh, the author has given spot on solutions. Again, if you remember, there's a comment I made in one of the uh, I've made a comment on, on, on one of the, the, the articles. Um, parties can actually consent to their mediation process being public, like the ones on Radio Jambo. But yes, this is a concern and I agree because one of the motivations that actually bring parties to mediation is the confidentiality nature. Um, and today we are not very safe unless there are these controls that you have suggested um, when there is online mediation. The 21st article here, infusing mediation in conflict resolution between TSC and NAT for successful acquisition of quality education in Kenyan primary schools very very topical very thematic i know that this has been going on and you know there are even parents who have removed their children from uh, the famous cbc or maybe the infamous um i think to this the only suggestion that i have given is uh that uh, NAT, NAT is, uh, is a labor, is a union, is a trade union. And whenever there's a trade union, then again, the approach is a tripartite approach. And so conciliation is usually available uh, from ministry of labor, conciliation being an alternative is resolution itself. And of course, indeed, that the grass fills the brunt of two elephants fighting our children, I agree, that ultimately end up suffering for a very long time. And this article brings out the reality uh, where we have actually undergone through different systems of education. And one really wonders 
whether that is even healthy. Then the 22nd article, mediation, everyone wins. The new median in the justice process by Dr. Helen um, Joroge. Of course, this is uh, an article which brings out um, the, I usually call it the pre-2010 actually uh, situation in our courts. Let us appreciate that the post 2010 has been much, much better. And when we talk of the post 2010, I know that the first thing that we look at as mediators is our famous article 159 that has brought in, you know, ADR as part of uh, the, the system that the judiciary must look into. In our practice, we call them the court referred uh, uh, processes. And yes, I do agree very well that uh, it has really, really helped in uh, reducing the backlog of cases. Um, And it's not just about the backlog of cases. The conclusion here is also very, very nice. At the end of the day, it's not just the backlog of cases, but also the enhanced human relationship between the disputants. One of the very good, one of the most popular advantages of ADR, given that parties usually look at each other as enemies, literally, when they resort to litigation or dispute resolution by, by way of going to court. Then there's the 23rd article, and this is by Margaret W. Gizai. Adolescents, guardian parents, conflicts, a bold one, but uh, I really, really uh, thematic one. Most of us are parents. And uh, yeah, most of the time we, we really, I personally, I'm yet to have teenage uh, or adolescent uh, children, but I, I dread the time when I'll be the adolescents. And yes, there is, and I agree with this article, that uh, there is a need for the professional family mediator to also be an expert in youth matters, so as to speak their language. Um, um, But uh, it is also important, it is also important that uh, this professional family mediator also be an expert in youth matters. Reason being that most of the time we look at our professionalism, forgetting that, that uh, uh, we, we, we actually do not take time to come to the level of, uh, of the youth, of the adolescent. And we have experts that actually understand uh, the youth. So it's, to me, my brief comment here is that it goes beyond just being a professional family mediator 
in helping resolve these conflicts. Um, it is also important to appreciate that the fact that one is a professional family mediator does not necessarily mean that we are also expert in youth matters and in particular adolescents. So that was my uh, two cents um, my two cents comment and suggestion uh, in terms of this beautiful uh, article. Then the 24th article, use of mediation in cattle wrestling conflict in Northern Kenya. Ah, this one is a really, really bold topic. And uh, those of us who understand exactly what happens uh, in this particular in these particular issues, it is also, it is extremely important for us to, and it has what? To identify community influencers. Um, and uh, yes, I agree with the, with the mediator De Debbie, uh, you know, as far as research is concerned, it's important to actually do a thorough research on specific areas in an attempt to understand, in an attempt to understand the cause, actually, rather than the symptom, because uh, so much is cultural, and believe you me, for those of us that probably come from such cultures, we actually know that it is not even considered an offense. It has been considered an offense under a different law that is very alien to these particular cultures. It is actually the, our, 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 our colonial masters who came up with this particular offense. In fact, even the term cattle wrestling does not actually exist in these particular cultures. So, very bold. I believe it's a topic that that uh, can best use influencers so that they try as much as possible to understand um, the uh, uh, the the issues and to, to 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 make make it possible for this members of this community to also appreciate that times have changed and that there are laws and that it would be better that this particular culture stops. So in as much as mediation would really, really help uh, and has helped, has helped. We have, you know, influencers, we have celebrities uh, that, have, that have, have helped these particular communities. It is important to uh, appreciate the cost rather than the symptom. And I believe the last, probably the second last article by Mrs. Majorimburu, good health and well being in mediation. Wow. Um, just reminded me of a topic I did last night. Uh, and that is, you know, that was entitled The Strang Bow Effect. Uh, and very, very briefly, uh, it's about the strain that uh, a strong bow has. And for communities that use bows and arrows, they will understand that it is important to once in a while unstring the bow so that it relaxes. Uh, and 
this really means that uh, those of us are, who, are, who are professionals and especially in mediation, we are out there literally um, doing our best to resolve you know, all manner of conflicts. And yes, it really has a toll on us and it is important for us to, you know, uh, once in a while or once every other time uh, unstring our bows so that we can be effective uh, in assisting and in helping uh, the very people that we assist in, uh, uh, in conflict resolution. Our health is paramount. Beautiful article. I think the only other comment that I made here is, of course, touching on the length of the article, probably uh, just making the conclusion just what it is, so that it doesn't appear to be another subtopic uh, in this particular blog. I believe uh, this is the last comment and uh, over to you, uh, Wangare. Today. And uh, to the bloggers, to the mediation bloggers, as it is always, it's always a pleasure and humbling indeed to be amongst uh, you uh, as colleagues and uh, always uh, willing to learn from you and also to unlearn uh, and also share a few nuggets uh, of wisdom here and there. So thank you so much for listening in and uh, have a good afternoon and wish you all the best, all the very, very best towards uh, being fellows and even to towards writing articles in mediation. Good afternoon.